from Washington, this is VOA News. U.S. Secretary of State Kerry preparing for a statement on climate change. Protesters in Ukraine may be ready to give up the capital city hall. I'm Vincent Bruce reporting from Washington. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry is in Indonesia where he plans to make a major speech Sunday on climate change and its possible impact on Asia. The State Department says Kerry plans to talk about what it calls the compelling and undeniable scientific case that the Earth is getting warmer and heading to the point of no return. He will stress that this is a global problem that needs a global solution. A warmer planet means a rise in sea levels, which could have a dangerous impact on island nations like Indonesia. Kerry arrived in Indonesia Saturday from China, where he talked about global warming and other matters with President Xi Jinping. Opposition leaders in Ukraine say protesters are ready to vacate the Kiev City Hall they have occupied for more than two months. However, the head of the nationalist Svoboda party, Ole Chanyebak, said Saturday the decision to do so has not yet been made. Chanyebak said his group is seeking guarantees the government will close all the criminal cases against participants of the protest movements. The apparent easing of tensions comes after Ukrainian authorities freed all 234 jailed members of the protest movement. More on these stories at voanews.com. UN mediator Lakhdar Brahimi apologized to the Syrian people Saturday as the latest round of peace talks in Geneva between Syria's government and opposition ended without any agreement. He said those two rounds of talks have not done very much. Lisa Schlein has the story from Geneva. UN mediator Lakhdar Brahimi's final meeting with the two warring parties lasted only 27 minutes. Brahimi says the two delegations agreed on an agenda for the next round, but not on how they would deal with the complex issues. He says the agenda reflects topics each side considers most important. For the Damascus government, Brahimi says combating terrorism is the most important issue. The Western-backed opposition says formation of a transitional government is crucial. And that Syrian President Bashar al-Assad cannot be a part of any transitional government and that he has lost all legitimacy as a national leader. Negotiators representing the Syrian government reject this view. Lisa Schlein for VOA News, Geneva. German Chancellor Angela Merkel is considering a European communications network to help improve data protection. The proposal, which Merkel reportedly will discuss in a meeting next week with French President Francois Hollande, would provide the capability to avoid emails and data passing through the United States. Lebanon has announced a new cabinet that includes a wide range of political groups breaking months of bitter infighting, mostly over Syria's civil war. Prime Minister Tamam Salam announced his 24-member national unity government on Saturday. Parliament had designated the Sunni lawmaker as prime minister in April last year, but rivalries between the Shiite Hezbollah-dominated March 8th coalition and the Sunni-led March 14th alliance had prevented Mr. Salam from forming a government. Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro responded Saturday to ongoing opposition protests with a counter-demonstration bringing together thousands of his supporters. President Maduro, successor to the late Hugo Chavez, used the pro-government rally in the Venezuelan capital to denounce opposition leader Leopoldo Lipes. Lipes currently faces an arrest warrant for organizing anti-government protests Wednesday that resulted in deadly clashes with police and government supporters. Three people were killed, including two opposition protesters. At the Sochi Winter Olympics, the Russian-U.S. ice hockey team faced off against one of the U.S. and the Russian teams faced off against one another. 
at the uh, Sochi Winter Olympics. The United States pulled off a dramatic 3-2 victory at the Bolshoi Ice Dome. VOA's Park Brewer has a report. President Vladimir Putin was among the partisan sellout crowd that was sent home disappointed when U.S. forward T.J. Oshie of the NHL's St. Louis Blues scored the deciding goal in a memorable, nail-biting eight-round shootout. But little did Oshie think he would be called on six times to try to score in the shootout. Oshie scored on his one shot in the round of three, and his coach, Dan Bilesma, selected him for every succeeding attempt. He had two misses, but they came after Russian misses, so the score remained tied. Finally, in round eight, after Russian Ilya Kovalchuk missed his shot, Oshie scored the game winner. Park Brewer, VOA News at the Sochi Olympics. Russia has the most total medals with 15, followed by the United States and the Netherlands with 14 each. Germany leads the gold medal count with seven. I'm Vincent Bruce, VOA News, reporting from Washington.